Hi guys, and now we are uh, with uh, one concept called as uh, minority interest. And uh, minority interest is uh, something that tends to confuse a lot of candidates, uh, specifically when uh, when they read an annual report uh, and they see this income statement and there's a line item of minority interest, which they don't really understand. Uh, and plus also when uh, you know in the interviews they're asked on what is minority interest and how is it treated in the income statement and the balance sheet they're not able to understand okay, so i'm going to make it very simple for uh, every one of you to understand this i'm going to take an example of berkshire hathaway uh, actually uh, acquiring a smaller company like precision cast so uh, berkshire hathaway i mean uh, synonymous to uh, warren buffett you know, it tends to take a lot of controlling stake in smaller companies, uh, and uh, you know, usually about controlling stake means with that you have uh, more than 50% ownership, right? And uh, the accounting rule says that if you have a controlling interest, that means you have more than 50% ownership uh, in any company, uh, then you have to consolidate. Okay, now what does that mean? So that is what we're going to get into. All right, so let's take that example here. So let's say that Berkshire Hathaway wants to acquire 75% of uh, precision cast uh, in which there are two owners. I've just simplified things. This is not real. Uh, these are just, you know, made up numbers so that you understand. So we've got Jason and Mike. 75% is owned by Jason and 25% uh, is owned by Mike. All right. Now, the rule says if that if more than 50% is acquired, uh, then what you need to do is you need to consolidate that means you need to combine all right now let's first understand how does this take place at the first place so if i'm acquiring uh you know 75 percent i can directly take the share of jason and then mike is just left out right so what's going to happen is for example if we have uh, Berks this is the books uh, berkshire hathaway's balance sheet in which we have in the asset side we've got about 300 and cash we've got about 500 and on the equity side we've got 800 right so if i were to just uh, add up the both the sides it would look something like this right and in precision cast with uh, it has got uh, property plant and equivalent of 100 a cash of 100 and equity of 200 so it's balance sheet looks something like this right so the total would look something like this i'm trying to oversimplify things so don't uh, you know uh, don't think that this is uh, you know an advanced calculation but this is just enough for you to uh, at least at this level it's just enough for you to know okay there are multiple uh, complications also to this but we're not going to get into that for now first let's just get the concept out of the way so I've created a pseudo balance sheet for both these companies. Now what is going to happen if I acquire, uh, you know, 75% or the controlling stake of Precision Cast? That means Precision Cast now becomes a subsidiary company of Berkshire, right? And in case it becomes a subsidiary, we need to add up, right? So that means if we've got property plant equipment of 300 at Berkshire, then we're going to add 100 of Precision Cast, right? the equity side if uh, equity side really doesn't change okay and if you see on uh, on the Berkshire Hathaway side we have got a cash of 500 now if we were to calculate how much we're going to pay to buy precision cast what we need to just do is uh, if we just take the equity side of uh, uh, precision cast right so we've seen the we can see the precision cast at uh, 200 right so that means jason owns 150 and mike owns 50 right so what we're going to do is we're going to take our cash okay so we have at berkshire we have about 500 cash so what we're going to do is we're going to add up uh, we're going to first reduce it with 150 and we're going to add up with 100 which is available in precision cast so that means in total i have 850 in my asset side right you got the idea so 500 is what we already had and we paid 150 to jason so that's minus 150 and we added what was available on precision cast right 100 now you can see that clearly the balance sheet doesn't tally right because and neither does the equity get added directly okay so you just don't add 800 plus 200 it doesn't work like that okay because equity shares are 
shares which are issued already for Berkshire, right? What instead we do is, uh, because now Mike is also indirectly, since Precision Cast is now owned by Berkshire, right? That means controlling stake, right? That means all the decisions are taken by Berkshire, right? So that means indirectly, if Berkshire is holding control over Precision Cast, then Mike also indirectly becomes the shareholder of Berkshire. But if you see the balance sheet, he's nowhere to be seen. So in that case, what we will do is we will have a small entry of minority interest in the balance sheet. Okay. And we will record Mike's uh, share in the liability side as minority interest. Right. So this gives the clear picture that, you know, uh, what has happened to the minority shareholder of the acquired company. Right. Now we've, uh, we've obviously consolidated out here itself. Uh, you know, if you want to just uh, actually wanted to do it here, so this is what it would look like, right? So 450 and this is the total. So, you know, initially they had their standalone financial statements and now they have the consolidated financial statements. So this is now the consolidated balance sheet of Berkshire, right? Also representing what is owned by Mike. Now what happens to the income statement? So let's say these are the standalone income statement for both of these companies, Precision Cast and Berkshire, right? Now, simple calculation, we will add up the sales of both the companies. We will add up the cost of both the companies, okay? And what we'll do is first we will calculate profit before minority interest, which is going to be 700 minus 400, right? And then remember 25% of the profit of precision cast we do not own, right? That is owned by Mike. So we're gonna write 25% multiplied by 100, okay? Which is gonna give us 25. And profit after minority interest is gonna be 300 minus 275. So this is available for, uh, you know, 90 or I, I, you could say that all the common shareholders of Berkshire which includes Jason as well okay but 25 is owned by Mike right so this 25 will now go into the balance sheet of minority uh, Berkshire in minority interest section and 275 will go into retained earnings so this 25 will go out here and add up here in minority interest and the remaining 275 is going to go up in the equity side of your uh, Berkshire Hathaway. So now it's clearly seen that even Mike's ownership has increased by the proportion he owns now in uh, precision cast, right? So his interests are clearly now noted. Now on the asset side, obviously we don't have the cash flow statement. Otherwise, whatever profit, if let's say the entire, uh, you know, 300 was made as uh, cash then this would also turn up as uh, cash okay so that would make the end oh sorry i did it at the wrong place so where did i record it here right so i need to just add this up there you go 1150 and the cash got added here as well right because i added out here that's why it's not showing let me just remove this from here and that entire 300 which was made as profit if it was in cash then it would tally up directly so this is what is minority interest and this is how it is treated in balance sheet and income statement that is enough for you to know for the interviews if someone was to ask you you know how what is minority interest and how it is treated in the financial statements and i will see you in the next lecture Bye-bye.